Well, Soren, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come and talk with us. Uh, we just had a great conversation with in uh, Ingalil about her collection, and we know you've been a big part of this uh, the story from the beginning. Uh, and so, could you say a little bit about how you met uh, Dr. Hansen and uh, how you're wrapped up in the whole Aka collection? Sure, I'd love to. Um, we met back in 1974 or five at the International Student Center of Copenhagen. Um, that's a place where we, Dane, she was kind of Dane at that time, because even though she's Swedish, she lived in Denmark. We um, helped foreign students get in, into the society. Oh. And so from that time, we were friends, and we had a large group of friends, and that has lasted until today, where we have a, a international student dance group together. Okay. So that's kind of the, the social part of it. Um, and, and by the way, we forgot to, to actually introduce your full name, and would you like to start yeah, with that as well? Um, yeah. My name is Soren Borch. Uh, I'm Danish. Uh, I was born in 1950, so I'm 72 uh, now. Um, and when we met, I was like 25, and she was like 32. Okay. Uh, and already then she had she was studying Chinese and I think not yet Aka. Uh, but um, in 76 to 78 she went to Thailand for two years mm -hmm. to study Aka and that was ha lucky for me because I, then I had her apartment so that way we got to know each other. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, when I married my wife, my girlfriend and became my wife, Lise Fo, who has also worked in this area. Uh, in 1980, uh, we moved into a house and Ingelil moved into our house also. Okay. And, uh, and that way, when we had children in 81 and 84, she was an aunt for yes. them. So she has become really a part of the family. How wonderful to have such friends that you've known for years and you've continued to right. work together and, and, and dance together, I think, yeah. for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, then, um, while we lived there, in 82, she got a position at um, Lund University. And Lund, 82, I checked it. <laughs> okay, we say 80. Good friends anyway. talking here. <laughs> uh, but because you moved together with us in 80, and then the, and then the Lund, I think, was in 82. Could be. Um, <laughs> but, so she had to um, um, commute between Copenhagen in Denmark and Lund in Sweden, which is, was like two hours travel or something. Um, she had a position at the university as a uh, uh, lecturer and researcher mm -hmm. um, in Chinese and research in Aka, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a wonderful time. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll give a small anecdote, kind of yeah. Yeah. social anecdote. Um, we were young, my wife and I were young parents, and uh, you know how it is when the children uh, are around you all the time, you never have time together. Yeah. So it was so wonderful to have Ingele living with us, because then she would take the children now and again, like uh -huh. every second Tuesday, I think it was, and we would have outings, like Great. dates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. Date nights are important. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, why am I so interested in all this, uh, in, in English research? Mm -hmm. It's because at a, at a moment, I don't quite remember what year, she shared with us um, 61 pages of some oral sagas. Mm. And she also shared with us a tape uh, and um, the, the transcript of it in English uh, of some folk songs. Mm. And that was wonderful for me because the folk songs, for example, I had, I had been in Thailand to visit her oh, wow. and visit also the uh, Mebu, her town in Aka town in, in the northern Thailand. Mm. So I'd heard these songs and I remembered them very well because I'd had a fever for a day or two and heard these songs <laughs> waving around me. So it was wonderful for me. Anyway, the, the 61 pages of s sagas uh, made me really see the parallel to uh, my own culture 
uh, we have the Nordic countries, uh, uh, five Nordic countries, and Iceland has saved, uh, it's one of them, and has the sagas from back kind of Viking times. And they, that time we were all kind of the same thing. Uh, so, but they have they have saved the sagas because they survived in the Iceland as oral um, stories, right. while they got lost in here where we were christened earlier. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so they have survived up there, and they have been um, transcribed into transcribed into script, script? Mm -hmm. transcribed transcribed into modern uh, language uh, Nordic languages. And that has had an enormous importance for our whole culture and our understanding of our own people. Mm -hmm. There's also a Kalevala that is a Finnish, maybe a parallel, that is a fantastic uh, um, story of their origin and which Ingelil used to read in Danish though for our children and they loved it. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, that kind of caught me on. And um, um, so I often try to find out what, what she's actually doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do speak some languages, but I've not done linguistic studies myself. I'm an engineer. Um, but I found this very intriguing. Mm -hmm. So I asked her and looked around and what is that, etc. So now I can just explain to you, reveal her, her process and her materials. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I would just go back to the yeah, fact that you were talking that. about the sagas and how it was important for identity and for people thinking about their past in the Nordic countries. And so we, we say a lot for, for indigenous populations these days when their languages are being lost, how important it is for these kinds of texts to be uh, preserved and shared so that they are also feeling this same kind sure. of connectedness. So as you said, they were for, for Icelandic folks, the sagas have been written down. Uh, but not so much as you come to the south here, right? Well, they were common have... sagas at that time. Ah, at that yeah. time, we spoke the same language. Ah, okay. And that language is more or less vanished, mm -hmm. but the Icelandic is closest. Then the Norwegian and the Danish is furthest ah, away. Ah. So a Dane normally would not be able to read it. Okay. Uh, old people like me have learned about it in school, so we'd be able to work our way through it. Right. Uh, so you had some access that way. Yeah. yeah. But you might say that language has lo it's been lost and we have new languages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So parallel. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now the, the collection. Yeah. yeah. So what I would notice when, we, when I visited Inge Lil in um, Thailand, in Chiang Mai, she would work with the consultant that we at that time called informant. And he was a very splendid guy uh, and a very... Um, um, what do we call that? Uh, cultivated, and he, because he knew these uh, rituals, and had had them handed down generation by generation. So all his childhood, he must have been a, an apprentice mm. with another uh, storyteller. Mm. So it's fascinating. Anyway, she would take she would tape him on a tape recorder and make takes like this, mm -hmm. and she would do the same for songs in the village or. When she and uh, when she uh, interviewed people in the village, uh, what is this? Uh, that's a spoon. Okay, and things like that. So she would get all kind of text material, um, and then what she did was she would take. She numbered these. She was actually very. Um, I mean, I love it. I'm a computer man. I love the way she did it. She yes. gave gave each tape a unique identifying number. Uh -huh. That's wow. I like that. <laughs> and then she made notebooks. So these notebooks, uh, um, like this one, for example, oh, <laughs> they're also numbered with a unique number from one. And there are, I think, 135 of these, and there are 145 of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, in these, she would um, translate, she would, well, depending a bit, but she used it for studying a tape, a, a text right. body. Right. And so she would write out this te text body in Aka, in her phonetic language, mm -hmm. and then she would translate it in English. And then she would also do a lot of um, lining under and saying, here, this is interesting, and etc. So I thought that was fantastic. But then she wanted uh, to analyze it better. So 
and I never, at that time, I, we all thought she was a bit funny because you're talking about particles and things. We don't kind of have that same <laughs> concept in Danish, so we didn't really know what she was talking about. Anyway, so she found all, all kind of interesting particles in the, the text, and then she would write down on the, in um, index cards, mm -hmm. like these small ones, mm -hmm. and on each of them, there were, on the top, you would have the name of the particle, and then examples that would tell how to use it in the start of the phrase, in the last part of the phrase, or whatever. I, 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 don't, don't, well, don't... The well, details, I, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not really... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can explain that another yeah, 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 day. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic, yeah. And, and then for each yeah. example, there was a number, for example, 9811.11, that meant notebook nine, number 98, page, page number 11. 11. And of course, I would say, wow, that's fantastic. That couldn't be much better for a computer or anything. And uh, she would say, well, that was just the way she had to do it to learn the language and to learn the structure of the language. And I found that very fascinating. Um, and um, then, of course, that gave her, uh, that's what you call concordance, I think, or kind something of, like that. Kind of, yeah, manually yeah. doing a concordance, yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Or it could also be used for doing a dictionary or something. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she made a lot of um, more, um, she later had computer, mm -hmm. but I think already before she had that, she had typewriter, normally old-fashioned. <laughs> And um, and then she would have uh, written it out on on um, paper. So here's an example. Um, printed out. Uh, from printed the, out from a typewriter a piece side of paper. By side kind yeah. Of analysis. So you have the architect text and the English text, and uh, also referring to the notebooks. And that way she worked her way through it. And um, she also luckily did her the effort of um, of printing the whole um, all this the stories so we have books and books like these with architects and English text of the stories still referring to the um, notebook so it's quite fascinating because I, as an engineer and computer man I thought wow she really did that well <laughs> yeah um, yeah. And I understand from you all now manually. that it is actually, yeah. and it was all manually yeah. for years and years and years. And then in the end, she started using a computer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so I was very fascinated about that. And um, so when I heard that uh, you and her uh, and you had gotten into contact, I was fascinated because we had tried me and some friends to. Uh, uh, conserve, would you say that? To, to, to preserve and preserve her, um, and, yeah. Yeah, her material. Mm -hmm. And so we had taken some of the stories and um, copied them and put them on a small uh, web page we have called aka.dk, as it just the Danish, so, for friends. Um, but I always felt very bad about all this enormous uh, volume of deep knowledge that we, her friends, were not capable of doing justice. So when I heard about you guys and your project uh, Corsal, mm -hmm. I was so fascinated and I just jumped out of the chair and went here and started, yeah, let's find out where are all the things, let's get in the order. <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've done <laughs> to, a great to job. To make sure that you would be able to, mm -hmm. to actually understand mm -hmm. it because we had just one year ago moved her from one apartment to another apartment and I felt very ashamed we had not helped her organize her things after that. Mm -hmm. So I, well, we did that. Yeah. So that's um, kind of our, you might say, life together in the, in the, in the shade, not out the shade, in the light of the uh, Aka language. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so for, for our part, you know, we, we've, I've been meeting um, Ingalil at conferences off and on. And we have, you may not remember Ingalil, but we have talked previously about your Akka materials. And you had said, oh, yes, you had some, some things at your brother's house. And so this, this may have been about 10, 15 years ago we had discussed it. And so I knew in the back of my mind that there were materials that you had. And then talking with Jim Matisoff, he said, oh, yes, she really... 
there's a lot there that you should you should talk to her because she she has a need for the preservation. So things really came together. Yeah. Uh, uh, when we emailed and then you were here immediately to to tell us that you had been thinking about this as well. So it's fantastic. And it's, uh, when I look through all the things, it's also interesting to, to see that much of it is there in double copy. It's because when she lived in Thailand and she had to go with some kind of flight that at that time you never knew if the lo well not today either if the luggage would catch up with you yeah so yeah. she made uh, backup copies of the notebooks and of the tapes so there is actually there's some there's extra yeah. sets yeah a lot to learn from from all those careful steps uh, yeah. from the cataloging yeah. to the backing up and now finally it's like bringing everything together to yeah. to uh, a digital collection so and uh, i think the only thing I did that was more in the in the technical area for her was when she had not yet started using a computer for concordance. I taught her how to use spreadsheets and and how to s select and sort, etc. But that, of course, took a lot of work from her side to tape it uh, to, to type, that type it all in, and, and, and then, then you ran your program on it. And, yeah, and, and it or rather, she did herself because yeah. uh, we she she learned how to use it. Wonderful. So that's uh, I, I've enjoyed that All right. travel. Well, we hope that the next steps are also equally interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Ingalil would like to continue working with Flex and putting some of her texts in that way, and we'll mm -hmm, keep mm -hmm, in touch and mm -hmm. uh, hope to hope to talk to you more about this. Sure. Okay. All right. So there are um, you have other materials that are um, not the ones that were collected in the field. And we're also trying to curate some of those. Do you want to tell us about those? I would love, because I feel a bit ashamed that just before, when we were talking about all the boxes and, and uh, po notebooks, etc., the listener would say, and so what? That's a lot of work, and who can use that? Oh. Um, well, you, I know from you that researchers can use it, but who can actually use it more? And then I would like to show you... Um, like uh, this is what would you call that a, like a journal article a journal article she has made journal articles about uh, aspects of uh, studies in Aka language um, uh, either linguistic very um, specific ones mm -hmm. or more broad almost anthropological mm -hmm. things she's uh, made a chapter in this book Sino-Tibetan languages um, the kind of standard uh, reference for Akadaka language, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And she has uh, participated in a number of conferences, and for each conference that was kind of the deadline that made her finish a synthesis of some of all her uh, raw material, kind right, of. Right, right. And uh, so we heard about these uh, uh, conference papers every year or every half year or something, but I think that's important to make a researcher work, uh, to finish off a work, because they work all the time, but to make mm -hmm. them finish, uh, round it off. So she has tons of research papers. Uh, here is one um, that she has collected. I am not certain how the conferences actually publish them, but I think they don't we, often... In linguistics, we typically don't publish them, mm -hmm. so it's good to have the handouts yeah. from them. Yeah. In the old days, we all have handouts, so they had a lot of examples, and they had you know, the thought of the researcher at that particular time. May never have actually made it into a published, uh, you know, volume, so it's nice to have those. My wife has tried to make a, a list of all her publications and papers, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, so I hope uh, that would be available for everybody. Some version is already available on our homepage, aka.dk, mm -hmm. but that would be improved. Great. Well, we hope to have all of that information and have the, this interview as well as the interview we did with uh, Inga Lil on corsal.unt.edu and on our YouTube page. Um, and uh, we'll have an Aka language resource collection coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. <laughs>